Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. This month I'm joining the Let's Get Organized Paper Crafters YouTube Hop and sharing my craft space along with all the other members of this hop. Hey everyone, so before we get started taking a look at this space behind me, I want to let you know that this video is going to be a condensed version of a craft room tour. With this being a hop, I didn't want to take up a bunch of your time because there are some other craft rooms you're going to want to see. The video links will be listed in the description below so that you can click on those other tours. A few years back, I did create a series of videos about this craft room, and some of the items I'm going to share with you are the same, but about 18 months ago, I did have to make a shift in my business, so my craft room had to change along with me. If you happen to watch any of those original videos, you're going to notice quite a few changes. Now, because this is a shortened tour, if there's something that you see in this video that you want more information about, or you want to see in more detail, go ahead and post those questions in the comments below, and I'll make a series of supplemental videos. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with a quick pan around the room. This is a very small space, about nine foot by 11. So I'm going to do my best not to bump into things as I rotate around the space. This was previously a bedroom for three of our boys. And now that they're grown, I have the space for myself. You're going to notice that I use quite a bit of wall space. I don't do well with clutter, so I like to have everything in its place and off my desk. We're going to go ahead and start with that. This is my workspace. It's an L-shaped desk that my husband custom built for me to fit this room. On this side, I have projects that I need to finish, my coffee, my computer, and above, I have some storage pieces. I do work on a laptop, which happens to be on and bright and glowing. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is up on two little shelves so that I can get a good shot of my face when I do live videos. Below the laptop, I have storage items that I use for recording videos and going live. There's some mics, headsets, uh, my external drive sits in here, and a couple of earbuds that I use. As we move to the left, I have a mug warmer, my pens, a mini vac for cleaning up messes, and of course, dog treats. These are all just simple little necessities that I keep in my space. Above the laptop are storage pieces. The other half of my desk is my creative space. So a lot of this area works as dual storage. I have a larger shelf with bins and some baskets on hooks. And let me go ahead and zoom out here so that you can see it a little bit better. On either side, I have adjustable lights. My plan someday is to have a dual camera work area here for live streams. So I've already put these lights in place for that. These also illuminate my face for videos, zooms, and live streams. They are adjustable so that I can bring them down close to the desk or dim them if I need. The shelf that I have with the decorative items on it also has three little bins that I use for what I like to call everyday embellishments. I'll go ahead and pull one of these down here. This one is filled with enamel dots, which I use on almost every project. So it's nice to have them nearby when I'm filming. All right, let's go ahead and move to the right. On the wall, I have items that I grab from while I'm working. At the top, I have gesso and gel mediums and watercolor paints and brushes. The next bin has my Misty, some little notes that I keep for myself nearby, and some quick charging cords. The last bin is filled with adhesive items that I use occasionally and my scraper tools. Above this, I have more wall storage. These are fryer baskets that my husband salvaged, cleaned, painted, and added wood slats to. I like how deep and sturdy they are. Most of this is random storage. 
On the left, I have cards that I've made and I send out to people. Below that is my art journal, a small paper trimmer, and a bin for storing acetate windows, masking sheets, larger foam strips, and clear mats from scrapbook.com. On the right, I have buttons in jars at the top, my Bramble Fox perspective storage, a Bluetooth speaker slash radio, uh, bins for my not just for boys acrylics and wood elements. In the larger drawer, I have stamping blocks. Now I use my stamping platform more than I use my blocks. So these are stored away until I need them. I do have one more space on this side of the desk I want to show you real quick. If you watched any of my previous craft room tours, this is where I kept one of my Cricut machines. I gave that one away to my son, so now I use this pullout for my photo printer and Glimmer Hot Foil machine. Let me pull this out a little bit more. This sits right next to my computer area, so I can send my photos directly to the printer. The Glimmer machine can be used right here on the shelf, or I can move it to the space where I'm filming. All the items that I need sit right there in the basket. Below this, I have an empty shelf. I believe in leaving room for growth, and my hope someday is to have a sublimation printer in this space. Right now, it's not in the budget, but I have an empty space to look at each day to remind me of one of my goals. All right, now that's a quick overview of one side of my desk. Let's go ahead and move to the left. Up on the wall are some more shelves that my husband built for me. I have my tri blends, a bin of washi tape, and six by eight pattern papers. Below that starts the area where I create. I'm one who needs to have everything within reach and eyesight. This shelving unit holds my foam dots, frequently used tools, adhesives, brushes, and blenders. From there, we move to what I call my prepping space. I don't like to stop a project and go dig for something, so I place everything here when I'm working on a project. This is something that I've done for a long time, and I think it's actually becoming more popular with crafters. And to the right of that is a power tower. The top is a wireless charger for my phone or headphones. On one side, there are USB chargers, and on the others, there are power outlets. This is great when I need to plug in my heat tool, foil machine, or heat press. The large wooden caddy is my prep caddy. When I'm recording a video or working on a live class, I place all the items that I need for a project right in here. It keeps my desk neater and prevents me from having to search all over the place for a die or stamp that I'm going to use. I did place this up on some foam discs so that the drawers would slide over the second glass board. In this drawer, I have repositionable tape, and in the other, I have extra blades and anti-static brushes. These are additional items that I use frequently, so it's nice to have them close by when I'm working on a project. And next to that is the area that you see when you watch one of my videos. I have an Archon mount and lights, this holds a phone for filming and a tablet that I can use when I'm doing live events. The lights are mounted onto the desk. Let me move in a little closer here. For the longest time, I had freestanding lights, but I always bumped into them when I went to grab something from the other side of the room. I also had to take them down every time I cleaned the floors. So I decided to permanently attach my lights to the desk and this works much better for me. Let me go ahead and turn on one of these lights uh, so you can see how well it works. I know that they aren't the three foot massive dome lights that every creator raves about, but these actually fit really well into my budget and in my space. And they do a good job of lighting up the glass board. The large board that I create on is magnetic and it's made of glass. It's 24 inches by 17 inches, which is plenty of space to work on when I'm making a large project like a double spread scrapbook layout. And next to this, I have a dish for die cuts and liquid adhesive. Again, items I use frequently, I like to have close by. 
Below my desk is a project cart. I work with a variety of companies and I needed a way to keep everything separated. So I have this little cart to help me. I had my husband alter it for me. This is a cart from scrapbook.com that originally had three shelves. I wanted the lower shelf to be able to hold 12 by 12 items. So he retrofitted it without a middle shelf. At the top, there are envelopes and boxes. In the front of that, I have a bin, which is currently holding some die cuts, but when I'm recording a video or a live, I use this as my trash bin. Almost everything I have in my space serves more than one purpose, and this cart is no exception. On the back, I have bins with larger scissors, a hook with my heat tool, stamp chamois, some stamp cleaners, and a stamp cleaning brush. On the lower shelf is a larger stamping platform and a large magnetic board. Again, all within reach when I'm creating. When I rotate this around, you can see the pockets that I have for my design team scrapbook kits. These larger plastic holders are great for storing everything that I received from a company and it's all contained in one unit. In front of those are more frequently used items like my color guide, shimmer and paint pens, and gel pens and journaling pens. All right, let me go ahead and put this back. Across from my desk, I keep a shelf of paper and bins of ephemera, ink and embellishments. The paper shelf was built by my husband to match the desk and the large piece of furniture with the metal bins was found at a discount furniture store in the entertainment center section. This is a piece of furniture I get asked about most frequently. So you might want to look up the words entertainment center and you might be able to find one. I'm going to do my best here to squeeze in with the camera tripod and show you what's in a few of the metal bins. The top holds stamps and the matching dies. I keep them in these little boxes and store them by company name. I do go through and purge my stamps once a month, so there aren't many in these boxes. Most of these are only partially full. The next bin down holds foiling items. I have my plates in those same boxes, some foiling sheets, foiling adhesive, and the paper needed for foiling. The bottom drawer is a bit of hodgepodge uh, with home decor catch-all, and I really need to go through this. The next row over is embellishments and ephemera. The top drawer contains die cuts that I divide up by company. These sit in some boxes from scrapbook.com with plastic dividers. Below this are sticker sheets and sticker books and sticker letters. Again, these are divided by company. It is about time that I go through these two bins again because they are getting rather full. In the lower drawer, I keep little boxes of embellishments, trim, ribbon, and embroidery thread. The last row is for inks, paints, and powders. The top drawer has my shimmer pot collection and boxes with embossing powders. Below that, I have ink cubes. I prefer to use smaller inks because they're much easier to store. Now, I'm one who believes in leaving plenty of room to grow, so this lower drawer is empty. I'm sure it will get filled up soon enough. Across the top of this entertainment center storage unit is my Cricut Maker, Cricut tools, pens, sprays, and watercolor pencils. Again, there is storage up on the wall. I have a Cricut tool holder that my husband designed for me and a spice rack that I use to store reinker bottles. I keep my sprays on this little shelf. In the drawer below, I keep all of my watercolor pencils and watercolor crayons. Now on top of that paper shelf, I have a large jar that I keep big rolls of twine and jute and hemp. Behind that, I have some liquid embellishments like pops of color and nouveau dots. 
In the large white wooden bin is my collection of chipboard that I divide up by theme. The shelf below that holds Distress Oxides and Distress Oxide sprays. And then we move on to my 12 by 12 cardstock and paper bins. Now each of those bins do have little scrap pockets in them, and those hold all the paper scraps that I choose to save. Most of those do end up going to my son because he uses my paper scraps to create homemade paper. Let me go back to the other side of my desk once again so that you can see this area a little bit better. Again, this is a smaller space, so it's a little difficult to get the full view of the shelves here, but when I'm creating, there's plenty of room to move around. All right, I am almost done. I know I'm going really, really fast, but like I said, this is going to be a condensed version. If you end up having any questions, go ahead and post those down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. So near my closet, I had this little random spot and I found the perfect shelf at a discount store to fit here. It holds my collection of stencils in one drawer and all of my texture pastes in the next. The two lower drawers contain pattern paper and cardstock that have been trimmed down to A2 size and slimline size for cards. And then I also have my card bases and envelopes in here. Because I wanted to be able to use every available space, my husband added shelves to the closet. At the top, I have items that I take to crops or retreats, although I haven't been to one in almost a year, so I probably need to go through this. There are some bins in here with extra supplies like adhesive refills, uh, rolls of tape, and foam adhesives. I also have tools that I don't use very often and craft supplies like paint and felt that I like to have on hand, but I don't need access to all the time. The last storage unit in my office is this large wooden piece. It was listed as a baby changing dresser and table and someone was giving it away free and it happened to fit perfectly in this spot. Someday I plan on painting it, but for now it's just going to sit full of craft supplies. Across the top shelf, I have a bin of embossing folders, my Spellbinders P6 die cut machine, a Cricut Joy and two easy presses. The next shelf has a large storage box that holds my label and ribbon cassettes for that label maker that's sitting there. I prefer to use books over online inspiration boards, so most of my ideas come from these books here. To the right, I have a larger die cutting machine. This one I have had for over 15 years and it's still hanging in there. Below the die cut machine are binders where I keep all of my dies. I prefer to keep like items together, so the top drawer here also contains dies and embossing items that don't fit in those binders or in the bin. I also keep my die removal tool in here and my die cutters. When I'm working, I bring out this little magnetic dish. It is designed for sewing pins, but it works really great to toss the dies onto while I'm working. The next drawer is a collection of hand tools. These are easy to reach from my workspace. The lower drawer contains baskets of sewing threads and bobbins. Below the shelf of all of the threads, there is a little place where I keep all of my fabric sublimation blanks. On what is considered the changing table, I have my sewing machine. Now I like to sew and craft in a standing position, so this was a great spot for my machine to sit. This sewing machine has an extended table, which is a great feature for stitching 12 by 12 pages. Behind my sewing machine, there is a little jar that has all of the machine attachments. In this really large drawer, I keep my die cutting machine plates and my Cricut mats. The drawer is large enough for a 24 inch Cricut mat. I don't use that very often, so I just store it underneath everything else. In the next drawer, I have a collection of Cricut materials. 
I have sticker sheets, card blanks, Cricut Joy Smart Rolls, labels, sublimation sheets, and sublimation blanks. In the lowest drawer, I have all my 12 by 12 Cricut materials. These little iris boxes hold my HTV sheets, vinyl, felt, metal and wood materials, and basically anything else that fits in them for the Cricut. All right, so that's basically everything in a nutshell. Let me do one more pan around my craft space and then I'm going to share a few still shots with you. I know that it was really fast, but like I said, this is a hop, so I wanna make sure that you get to all of the other creators' rooms. Don't forget, this little craft room tour is part of the Let's Get Organized Paper Crafters YouTube hop. In the description below, you will find a list of the other participants. Don't forget to stop by each of their channels and show them a little love with a thumbs up, a comment, or subscribe to their channel. Again, if you have any questions about the organizers I shared, you can find links in the description below. If I missed something or you want to see an item in my craft space in more detail, let me know in the comments below. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.